<laughs> Michael is the proud father of two daughters and a lifelong resident of Perrysburg. He is excited to present South Africa and Antarctica. Our, our, our lodges were like 2,000 square feet, they had their own pool, 
global, and South Africa. The South African economy is in shambles, so the rates there are very good as well, too. So we chose the Pondero, Pondero Game Lodge just because, just for research, it just looked like fun to try. This is the, the eating area, uh, or the lounge area, when we first came in. Uh, this is, we always like to be, wherever we stay, we always like to make sure we're on the, the river or on some water. The animals congregate to the water. So even though you go out on safaris, it's nice to just be able to sit in your hotel on the balcony and look out and see hippos, see elephants, or you know, whatever happens to be coming to the, uh, to the water. Uh, this is just a nice little head. Um, <coughs> funny enough, you know, everybody always encourages you to take the malaria shots and everything is so anti-bug there. This is the first time we went in the rainy season, uh, which is over our winter. Uh, and we did that because definitely we have to go to Antarctica you know, during the, the warm months there. We only do this, this plane trip in January, February. Uh, we almost never see bugs. And this time in the rainy season, same thing, almost no bugs. So we've been very lucky with that. Uh, just another view of, of kind of the hotel room and to give you an idea how large it is. We have our, you know, our sitting area outside. We spend a lot of time just sitting. You know, if you sit there long enough and you look outside, the animals won't come up to you, but they come closer than what you think. I mean, you'll see warthogs, uh, impala. Um, uh, you, you know, you'll, you'll even see some elephants sometimes come up closer than what you think. And as big as elephants are in the wild, it is amazing how quiet they are. When an elephant or a herd of elephants is approaching, you don't hear them, like in South Africa especially, because they're going through the woods, you can hear them until they are right on top of you. It's amazing how quiet they are. And just a little, little bathtub out there that you want to lounge there as well. <laughs> this is when you, when you to take a safari in Kenya or South Africa. This is the type of jeep that you take. Uh, in South Africa, you have a driver and you have a tracker because the animals, you know, everything is muted. So you just can't look out and see where the animals are. You have to have somebody see them. And you realize how well camouflaged they are, because he'll look and he'll point, and you're looking and looking and looking, and it, it takes a while. And we're like, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> so it's, you, they, you really do need a tracker to track some of these animals down. Perfect example, this is a leopard, and this was an extremely close-up shot. I mean, even knowing where the leopard is, I mean, you can just watch the leopard walk, and you walk, and just, he disappears. In, in, you know, because his, his color is so close, and he's so well camouflaged, and then you know, you'll see him again, and he'll kind of disappear, and it's just incredible how this big cat in grass that really isn't, isn't any taller than him, how they just disappear, and how they blend into the atmosphere. Uh, zebras, uh, always, always fun to see them. Uh, whenever, like in Kenya, uh, they have the zebras always, they have the great migration, and the zebras always migrate with the, with the uh, wildebeest. And I forget which one it is, but that's because one of them, the zebras can see, but they can't hear, and the wildebeest are the opposite. So one of them is listening for danger, one of them is watching for danger, and they both know to react to each other. Uh, this is uh, just a mom and a baby, even though it's a little bit more, uh, more, more grown. Most of the horns now, no matter where you are, are surgically removed. There's a charity that does that because it keeps them alive. Otherwise, the poachers grab them. So without the horns, they stay alive longer. Uh, the rhinos are probably the, the ones that are probably at least, you know, probably not the best tempered ones around. They tend to get a little bit more ornery. If you get a little too close to them, they'll let you know. And for such a huge uh, animal, they can run quick. So the, 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 the drivers in the Jeep know you don't get too close to the rhinos. Just another zebra picture. And they're all, I'm sure all of you guys know all the stripes and every zebra is different. Another leopard, we actually follow this leopard for most of the morning, because one of the things that they, that they like to do, you know, they're hunting. And sometimes they find something and sometimes they don't. While we followed this leopard, this leopard did not find anything. 
but you know, he was he made that like a big circle. So in South Africa or in, in Kenya, you always have to keep the jeeps on the road. In South Africa, you don't have to do that. These jeeps will go right through the bush, mm -hmm. and so you go, and it's like no matter where the leopard goes, we could follow it. And what the jeep would do is if. You know, if the leopard was here, you know, the jeep, you know, we would circle around and we would try to anticipate the line that he was going in. And we would try to wait, you know, and we would get the jeep's motor would be killed and we would watch the leopard kind of come up and, you know, just to do his thing. And sometimes that would work and other times the leopard would change direction when we couldn't see it and we'd lose the leopard. So, uh, this is another example of kind of how close you get. You know, we just kind of stopped. And you know the, the rhino just kind of ignored us, but he walked right in front of us. And I would say that rhino was probably about ten feet in front of us. Um, it always actually uh, more people are killed in Africa by hippos than in Israel. Uh, they are not; they're mean. Uh, they're very territorial, and of course, the people in Africa they need to get to the watering hole, whether it's for laundry or whether it's for you know any, uh, any number of things. And if they get between the hippo and the water, it doesn't end well for the person. So, so, but this was just a close-up shot of just a hippo that just happened to be hanging in a pool by itself. And this is the same pool. Uh, crocodiles, uh, I think this is the only crocodile we saw in South Africa. Crocodiles are abundant in Kenya, Tanzania, but in South Africa, you don't see them quite as much. Uh, these vultures, these are just vultures. And there's, there's a lot of, you know, in the South African landscape, there's a lot of these dead trees. And the vultures flock to them. I mean, you'll see 10, 20 of them in a tree. It's just kind of fascinating to watch them. And you know, when, when you see a, a kill, like say if a lion makes a kill, you know, nothing goes to waste down the savannah, you know, in, the, in the wild. You know, the, the lions will take the, the, the bulk of it, and then the vultures will all come, and they'll pick the carcass totally clean. And then the hyenas come, and the hyenas will eat the bones. Their jaws are so strong. Hyenas are the only bone of the only animals that their, their jaws are so strong they can get through any bone. Uh, this is uh, after our first night on Savannah, just one of the many beautiful sunsets. I mean, you, know, you see them, and it's like the next day is just as beautiful, or you take a picture, and then two minutes later, it's even more beautiful. So. This is just us, this is just our group eating dinner. Um, they always joke, it's like usually if, you, if you've if seen it on the, uh, in the safari that day, it may end up on your dinner plate at some point. Because uh, yeah, they'll do like, like impala, uh, kudu, like a lot of the, the deer that, are, that you'll see uh, during the trip, they, they cook and it's very gourmet and the food is excellent. I mean, impala is, I don't want to say it's steak, but it's pretty close, it's pretty tender. A lot of these things were pleasantly surprising to me because I'm, I'm not a venison lover, but the deer there was wonderful. This is this is a, the, the, of our group and a little bit better the view of the of the jeep. The hut behind is one of the um, uh, everybody kind of had their own private residence type thing, and that's kind of what it looked like right behind us from the outside. <coughs> Uh, to giraffes. Uh, it's always fun to see the giraffes. Uh, it's just, just watch them interact. Again, they just walk so slow and they're just so majestic and graceful. And, you know, my wife and I are both animal lovers, so it's like we just just enjoy sitting in the Jeep and just watching the animals just do their thing in, 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 the, in their environment. So many different birds. I don't know the names of any of these, so you can't ask me. My wife knows these. But there are just so many different types of birds that you see in Africa that you see nothing like here. So that it's very fascinating. This gives an example of how close that elephant's trunk, I think, was probably about a foot from Cindy's head. We thought the elephant was going to touch her head. And we asked the driver, he's like, no, no, he's like, he's just, he said, they can, the drivers are so good, they can tell by the elephant's mannerisms, you know. Yeah, are, they, are they playful? Are they aggressive? You know, what, what, what type of mood they're in? And he said, he's fine. He wants to touch you. Just, you know, don't touch him. But just let him touch him. So, <laughs> and see, he was fine with it. So, so but uh, he, they, they said when they, they look at animals, the, 
the guides in the Jeep, they said they look for five, there's five levels of agitation that they, they classify for the elephants. And you know, it may start with like the stopping of a foot or, a, or the moving of their ears. And they said, when they're, we're observing an, uh, an elephant, we don't go past two. So they said, once, once they get past two, then we, we, we back up or we move and we let them have their space. Baby elephants are, of course, the cutest, so it's just, and, you know, these, these elephant herds, I and mean, sometimes you'll just see a couple of them, sometimes you'll see 50 or 60 in our herd. And it's always fun to watch the babies. Uh, another very, you know, very different, very exotic bird. And that's the other thing we were lucky with. We were very nervous going to South Africa during the rainy season, and as you can see from the sky, it was a problem. <laughs> Okay, so these are, um, these lions were the laziest lions I've ever seen. They're, they're, they're tired of jumping out, and they are like a puppy that's asleep, or like when you see the, the tigers at the zoo, they weren't moving. So we just sat there and watched them, and they wouldn't even blink their eyes. So finally, you know, I, you know, they, you know there, there was some noise, so they lifted their heads just a little bit. And so we look a little bit, and there was a little beast. And they caught the scent of it right away before mm -hmm. we had seen it because you know, it, 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 it had just come out of the trees. So there's two little beasts and a baby. Now they're not <laughs> like now, now, now the posture has changed and now they're not hot. So now they're, what they're doing is, is the little beasts are kind of walking towards them. Little beasts are not the smartest animals on the face of the earth and they're kind of walking towards the lions. So the lions are deciding. Okay, what, at what point are we going to make our move here? So we're just sitting, as you can see, we're probably, I don't know, 10 feet from the lions. And they're just ignoring us. And they're off. Oh, no. So the little beast gets close, and they are after them full tilt. And this, this is the last picture I think I have of them. In this case, they did not catch it. So they, uh, they went, and you know, the, the way they hunt, uh, they're very methodical. I mean, they hunt as a team. And you know, they'll surround when they can, and sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't, but this time they did not catch the little beast. When we got back every day, those are little test tubes filled with some type of liquor. Uh, <laughs> that have to be half would be like lemonade, sometimes it would be wine, sometimes it would be a port, uh, sometimes it would be a sherry. Mm -hmm. Just you know, just something nice and warm when you got back from the, the day on safari. I mean, just a nice touch that the lives did. Uh, another picture, uh, we saw this group of lions. Uh, we saw a lot of, of, of prides where we saw maybe three, four females and you know, 10 or 15 assorted babies of different ages. And a lot of times they weren't active, they were sleeping, but it was when we would come across a group that was more active, we would follow it a little bit, you know, because it's, we just to see the, the expressions on the, the young ones' faces, because they were all very playful, and they always wanted to, they're like puppies, they just want to play with each other. Uh, more giraffes, and you know, as, as you drive around in South Africa or any place in Africa, you, you just never know what you're going to see around the next corner. It could be 15 minutes between sightings, but sometimes you can see a lot right away. This is actually in our hotel, uh, Little Monkeys. Uh, we had, I don't have any pictures of it, but our first trip to South Africa, we had a day bed outside our hotel. And we're out there, and these monkeys are jumping up on the roof and jumping into the day bed. Thinking this was like the best thing ever. So we called the lodge, and like, are this okay? Can we stay out there? It's like, oh yeah, they're just playing. So, but it was, it was very entertaining to watch. But what the monkeys do is they scavenge. So they're looking for, if you have a door that is closed or is open, they're going to go in and they're going to try and find some food. So that's rule number one is you keep the doors closed. Uh, this was just on the side of the road. We got a close up of just a really interesting spider. Again, just something you don't see in the U.S. This was a line that a uh, male that we came across. This was toward the end of the day. And our guide said, hey, let's hang around for a little while because he could just tell by the way he was motioning, he was getting ready to roar. And so we did get to hear him roar. Uh, it was extremely loud. Uh, but they said it takes a lot of energy for a lion to do that. And they do it for to protect territory or to announce their territory. Uh, but they said when they roar, it's it maybe lasted a couple minutes or so. It just exhausts them. They can usually only do that about twice a day. 
<laughs> and this is just another another leopard we saw. This this guy got a little closer to us. Uh, these are the impalas, uh, and they are all they are all over. They have uh, you can always tell the impala they have the M on their butt, and it's really it's like the McDonald's, and that, that's what they say. They are the fast food of the savannah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody eats them. <laughs> This is just us having a drink in the same lounge again. Like I said, it was kind of nice, you know, you could, um, the people that were in the lodge, and we all kind of talked about what we saw and what we experienced and where we were from and everything. And that's always a fun part about traveling is, you know, meeting people that, that are at the same location and what things that they have done too. Uh, another picture, this is actually the lion from before. This is his brother. And his brother was probably about, oh, maybe half a mile away. And in the, the, the view that we had, um, we could actually see them both in the same view because the brother was sitting up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. This is uh, what they call the keep. And what you can do for half, about half a day, I think it's about two hours, is they, they, you know, they take you away. You know, you're, not, you're never allowed to be away from the safari lodge without a guide, except if you go here. What they do is they take you for an afternoon, they drop you with some wine and a nice lunch, and they, they put you up top, and it's an observation area. And you, you can like look at a watering hole and everything, and you can basically just watch the animals come and go in a watering hole. And that's, to me, one of the most fascinating things, is just watching the animals come and go, and you really get a nice variety. So this is the little basket lunch and a couple bottles of wine that were there. And you can see the watering hole in the distance. It's nothing too huge, but and then, so the first things we saw, so, like I said, these are all juvenile elephants. Uh, this one is probably three or four. The little guy is probably less than a year, and the bigger one's probably about two years. And then there's a whole, sometimes elephants come in small groups, sometimes they come in bigger herds. And something I never realized until we were in Africa a time or two ago, I didn't realize elephants could swim. And you watch because they're, they're crossing the river, and I'm like, is the river that shallow? And our guide's like, oh no, it's like they'll swim across. And for something as big and bulky as what they are, they swim like nothing. Oh, wow. That's it. So just more animals, and you know, they're always going to cover themselves with mud just to keep themselves, cool. it's a way for them to keep themselves cool in the warm weather of, the, of summer. There's more and more elephants. And then, uh, you know, kind of on the side there, there's a, there was a leopard. He just he didn't really come to the watering hole. I don't believe. I think he just kind of was in the area, probably looking for a snack if an impala came, or you know, because the, the the predators always stick around where the water is too, because they know that the impala and the whatever their their food sources, they need water. There, that's where they're going to end up at some point. Uh, another nice bird. And this is a lion with a brand new set of cubs. And so we watched them for quite a while, just watching the cubs play, watching the dog get tired of them playing. And, you know, just like watching it, like I said, an adult dog with some puppies. Now, this is another one of the watering hole here, just, just more elephants getting a drink. And then the giraffe. It's interesting, too, the different parts of Africa. Uh, or, and even the, the different uh, game, you know, game lodges in South Africa, how some will be so prevalent in certain animals and yet you'll never see any, any of something else. Like at this time, we saw no cheetahs, which is a little unusual. But yet, we saw more, more elephants, I think, than whatever we've ever seen. So, that is a jackal. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a blurry picture, but that's the only view that we got of a jackal when we were there. Now, that's normally something that you don't really see, so, but, so it's always interesting, like, you see a jackal or a wild dog or something that isn't quite, you know, isn't, is a little more rare. Mm -hmm. Okay, another, another set of, um, uh, of uh, rhinos. This was one, this, this was actually lit up. There was, there was a light that's right out by this pond. This is kind of close to our lodge, and, the, the elephant was kind of standing right over the light, so it kind of makes a really cool picture. 
the other nice thing which we can get a glimpse of is, of course, are the stars. You know, when you're you're out in, in the savannah or in South Africa and you're out there at, at night, the stars that you see are incredible. It's just there's no ambient light anywhere, and it's just you, you look and you can see the Milky Way. Uh, it's it's incredible sight. Okay, this is a group of lions that we follow for a good bit of the day. And what our, our um, driver would do is he would always try and anticipate where are the lions going to walk to. So like I said, sometimes we get it right and sometimes we didn't. But here, he thought they were going to walk up the road. So what we did is we went maybe uh, 100 yards ahead and we just parked the Jeep and they walked right towards us. <laughs> so like I said, a lot of females, a lot of little babies, or a lot of young ones there too. They see the young ones, they were, uh, they, they, this is the way they would do. They would play for a little while, then they'd lay down, and then the mom would give them a swat, and they'd, they'd make them start walking again. So it's kind of interesting to see the interaction. Um, the, this one of the, one of the um, dinners that we had, I don't remember what it is, but all the food there was just very gourmet. So it, 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 it was really nice because we would go, our timeline was, we would get up at about 5.30 in the morning, and we would immediately go on a game drive. Uh, we just have a little tiny snack. Uh, we get back about 9, 9.30, we would have a breakfast. Uh, then we have the afternoon to just relax. Uh, we'd have a nice lunch maybe around 2, 3 o'clock. And then at 4 o'clock, we'd go out again for the evening game drive. Done at 8, which is when it's dark. And then so we'd have a late dinner, so we'd just come and relax. And they always had a wonderful dinner waiting for us. Uh, back at the lines here, I somehow got out of order. This gives you an idea. Uh, as, as we went by, you know, the lions are looking. I think my wife was probably two feet away from the lions. I mean, they were just right there. More elephants. Um, you can always tell when elephants have been somewhere in South Africa because they are the most destructive animals. They don't believe in walking around a tree when they can just walk through it and knock it down. <laughs> and they do. When you see, if you look and you see all these, like, mid-level trees and they're all pushed to the ground, that just means a herd of elephants went through because they don't walk around anything. <laughs> well, a few warthogs we saw, usually warthogs are like a rabbit. You see them everywhere. The strip from where we were, we just didn't see too many, but we saw a couple. And usually warthogs, they don't get spooked at all. I mean, they'll be like in the hotel grounds and you can kind of walk and you know, you can almost get close enough to touch it. Uh, they just are so used to being with people and everything. Uh, again, our, our flask of, I, I forget what type of drink this was. I think these are just the lemonade ones, because those were fairly clear, so. Uh, but these were actually, they had, they had, they would keep those waiting in our hotel room at night, too. So in case we wanted something cool to drink. Uh, another nice dinner. Okay, this is inside. This is one of the monkeys that is scavenging. And he all he's he's just waiting for that door to open and waiting, you know, just for any type of break. They know how to open the doors, they know how to get in, they know how to do everything. And they will take and no no matter it will take anything. Uh, another another entree. I would say we're big foodies, so we like to take some food too. Uh, okay, this is uh, Cape Town. So uh, this is the view out of our hotel. We stayed in the Victorian Alfred waterfront. Uh, the, the big, uh, let's see. The, here, this is Table Mountain. This is what they're famous for. And one of the reasons, another reason we kind of wanted to go back to Cape Town is we were there 10 years previous and it was raining nonstop. We heard there was a Table Mountain, we never saw it. It was so <laughs> cloudy and so fogged in, we never got anywhere close to it. Just a little bit different view. Uh, South Africa is not exactly the safest place uh, to vacation. It has a high crime rate, but if you're in this Victorian Alfred waterfront, it's a very safe place to be. We felt very safe walking around. Uh, the restaurants, the shopping, very nice, clean downtown area. It is very nice. This is one of the nice restaurants we ate at. Um, you know, obviously looking, overlooking the water. So we all had two cocktails. We had an appetizer. We had an entree. 
And this is the one in the tourist area, and I think it was a whopping $20 a person. Uh, the South African economy is, when, when we were there, we didn't realize that they have uh, what they call load sharing. They're, what they say is load sharing, we call rolling blackouts. They, their power grid is so over, you know, they've had so much corruption for so long, their power grid is so overwhelmed that everything gets turned off power wise. Like at the Safari Lodge, we didn't notice it because they had their own generator. It would just be, you know, 30 seconds the power would go off and it would come right back on. <clears throat> However, downtown Cape Town, our air conditioning in the middle of summer was all went off at 10 o'clock at night, didn't run until 5 in the morning. So it was not the most pleasant. Uh, there was different, when we went to different areas around Cape Town, uh, we had to go, the driver's like, okay, we have to go to Maumee now because we can't go to Perrysburg for another two hours because their power's off from two to four, and then it'll be on from four to six. And from what everyone was saying, it was only gonna get worse because nothing was happening, nobody was building anything. Uh, and even if they do build, it's gonna take a long time to get it, you know, get it back to where it, where it can be. So the, the economy is not in good shape. Again, just another view of our cocktails. Okay, now this is the trip to Antarctica. This is that day that the company is called White Desert that we went on, and the name of the trip is called the Greatest Day. Like I said, it really was the Greatest Day. They have a um, an A350 that they bought from somebody, so it's a private plane. There's probably about 15 or 20 of us on it. Um, the, the most traumatic thing was. As soon as you get on that plane, for basically 18 or 24 hours, you have no cell phone. You're, you're totally out of touch with everything. So, which was a challenge for me. So my wife was proud that I was able to do that. <laughs> um, we, they picked us up in our hotel at about 8 in the morning. We got to the airport by 9, and basically by 11, 10, I think 11 o'clock we were supposed to depart. We didn't depart until about 2 p.m. because there were storms in there. And they had mentioned to us, you know, get to Cape Town two days before because if the weather is bad, sometimes we'll move it the day before, the day after, you know, based on the weather window. And so we did that, and we thought, man, we weren't sure if we were going to go. And they said, well, the weather's looking pretty good. We're going we're gonna to give it a whirl. And we went, and we had perfect weather. Um, the problem was, was that, you know, we were, we, it was a one-day thing for us. Uh, the guys that went there, they had three or four days of snow, a storm after that. So for the people who run the seven-day trip, I don't know what they were going to do. They were basically going to stay in their tents for four days drinking. I don't think there was much <laughs> else to do. But we went. We, we flew the four hours there. Uh, you know, we stayed. We were on the ground for about five or six hours. And I wish, we, when we all went down there, we said, you know, I really wish we could stay for at least a day. You know, more than five or six hours. But on the flight back, we all said, it was perfect. We didn't need to stay any more, any longer. We got to see everything we needed to see. If we were there another two or three days, there's nothing else we could have seen. Just because you could, you know, the views are so expansive and we had such great views. We got back to our hotel room. Oh, probably, I don't think we actually got into our room until 4 a.m. in the morning. And we were just so much adrenaline. I don't think we could really go to sleep. So, because it was so fantastic. So, we landed and this, uh, this, is, this is the interior of Antarctica. We had nothing but blue sky. It was about 20 degrees there. So uh, it was actually you know, just a light jacket, and we were doing a lot of walking and hiking. And the first thing when we got there, they take it to here. It's like, OK, we're going to go up to the top of this. So all the jackets stayed at the bottom while we hiked up to the top. It took us, it, you, know, you don't really get a good perspective of how far it is, but it took us about 30 minutes to get up there. And this is all of us, a little bit better perspective, this is all of us walking up there. Um, in, in the area we were in, in, in the interior of Antarctica, there is no life, period. There's no birds, there's no trees, there's no anything. And the thing that was probably the most memorable about it is how totally quiet it is. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing. It's like you're on, in, on Mars or something, there's just nothing. And this is at the top, this is me sitting at the top, and as you can see, I just have, I have, you know, boots on, I have a pair of, of thermals on, I have a, a thermal, and I have a sweatshirt, and that's really all I have. And I was totally comfortable uh, pretty much the whole time, so we got so lucky with the weather. But you know, when you're, that's the Antarctica Airport. 
This is, this, this is our community here. All these little tents, that's the airport. Those are all the workers. And we, we, we land on an ice runway. And the reason, the reason that it is an A350 is apparently that's the only plane that has the right balance to land on the ice runway. And even still, they still had to weight it on the, uh, in the middle of the airplane so that when it lands, uh, you know, it'll, it'll land at, with the correct balance. Uh, obviously, taking off is the problem, and landing is the issue. Starting engines are also an issue as well. The engines do not stop when they're there. They keep the engines running because they don't want to take a chance of it going out. This is a little bit of a little side view of the other one that we climbed up. And it's just interesting to me how some area would be so snow and icy, and then some areas would be just, you know, to totally no snow, and that's the wind pattern. And this is, this is from when we're on the top of that mountain. We're going to see a lot of different views. And when you look at this, you see, you know, the, all the topography, the mountains, the, the I mean, it's just, just gorgeous. And, and, you know, when you're looking, the, all these pictures never do it justice, but just how expansive it was and how you saw this at every angle was just breathtaking. That's the same. Now, the reason I took this picture is this, this is looking south towards the South Pole. We are approximately 2,000 miles from the South Pole with, with where we're at. So it would have been another, you know, another, another significant plane ride. But he said, once you get south of where we're at, that's the view right there. There is no more topography. It's nothing but ice sheet. So they said, that's like, they said when they had these guys when they dog sledding, you know, they have a one or two week trek to the South Pole, they get excited if they see a little mound of snow somewhere because that's the only hill you're going to see. <laughs> yeah. uh, same thing, just another view of the ice sheet. And there's actually, if you look, there's a point, there's at the airport. <laughs> a little close up of the plane. This is just us going down that same that same portion of the mountain, or the hill, I should say. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's harder than what you think, too, because the terrain is so uneven. You have to be very careful where you step. You, know, you don't want to step on a lot of loose rock or anything like that. So you definitely have to take your time going in and out. Just, just more views of, of the overall landscape. This is basically just me doing a 360 around where we were. This is us taking, this is now going down the hill, and now this is the road back to the airport. There's a Jeep coming to pick us up, but you know, we're walking a little bit just because it's, you know, it's just so beautiful, the weather is nice. They just dropped you off? No, 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 there was a guy with us as well, but then they took the Jeeps back to do other things. Or... How about the wind? There was almost no wind there. No, when we were there, and we didn't start to notice the wind until we were about ready to be playing, and it got very light. So yeah, we just got so lucky with the weather. This is an all ice igloo that the, that the, the company, the White Desert, they own this whole area, the, land, the, the landing strip and everything, and so they built this igloo out of snow. And it, it's not that large, and you can see some of the utility of the workers' huts in the back. You can ride bikes if you want. <laughs> And this is just to show you how small the door is, you know, at, you know, going into the igloo. And inside the igloo, everything is nice, and they have a nice little bar in there. And I kind of joke, it's like, you know, that, that's one of the things they talk about. It's like, you know, you can have a, have a cocktail with 100,000-year-old ice, which is what the ice sheet is on the top there. But they, they toured, like I said, they have like a little uh, iron throne in the background that they carved out. The whole bar is out of ice. <laughs> Oh my god. It's just that they obviously a little bit of craftsmanship went into that, so. <laughs> and some of these, they did, what they didn't account for on this one is the, um, this top area right here, they didn't account for it, it, was, it sank a little bit. So there is isn't really room to sit there. So otherwise, you know, unless you're very short. <laughs> And then we 
we went afterwards. We had one of the tents. They had like a nice gourmet uh, lunch that they had made for us, and, and we had made champagne as well. And so there was a group of, I would say, 10 or 12 of us that did this tour. And you know, we were just kind of all kind of straight throughout the day and everything. We just enjoyed a cocktail at the end of the day. And this is it's, it's when we're in Antarctica. It's 24 hours of daylight, so it gets a little darker in the evening, but it never really gets dark. So this is this is the end of that article. This is I, in the intro we talked about the pool at Devil's Pool. So I put this in here from a separate trip. <laughs> you really you, you have to swim into the Zambezi River, and if you know the current is running towards the falls. So if the guy's there, the guy's like, okay, swim to there. So you're swimming that way, and the current takes you, and you go right to him. So they've got it down. So what you can't see there is the guy has his leg locked around my leg. So, and there's, there's like a little seat down there, and there's a protective ledge right there, so there's really no place for you to go. It looks more dangerous than what it really is. We, we, oh, we did have eight of us on this trip. Six, six of us swam out. Only four of us went in. The other two would not go in the pool once they swam out. They have to give you another view of what this pool looks like. That's, that's what we're at right now. Oh my God. Where is it? This is in uh, Zimbabwe. This is in Victoria Falls. And it's, it's, a, it's a great side trip. If you go to South Africa, it's about a one hour flight, and the falls are spectacular. It's, it's really wonderful. So that is it for the pictures. <laughs> Questions. How about, you showed a picture of a spider. Yes. How about more spiders or more snakes? Uh, we saw no snakes. Okay. But, but the snakes are nocturnal, so that's just something you normally don't okay. see there. Um, I mean, it's something you want to see, but you know, we just. And did you see more than that one spider? Yes, we saw a few more, but we of spiders. Um, I mean, we, or at least ones that were interesting. Anyway, okay. So. From hot water. Yes. Huh? You want you done with it? Hot water. So hot water. What about the safety issue? You guys are there. What kind of communication would you have with the outside? Well, the company, I mean, they have a plan. They, they obviously have satellite phones and everything in case of emergency. They have two planes. So, I mean, worst case scenario of the plane, with, you know, had a private mechanical issue, you know, the, fixing it there isn't really feasible unless it was, it was a Simple maintenance thing, but they had another plane they could fly down. I mean, it would be a, a day delay, but that would be the worst case. They actually have little huts in there you can stay in if you do like overnight or one week things. And then your lodge in South Africa or in Africa, were they all air conditioned? Yes, they were all air conditioned. Yes. Was it a big nature preserve that your safari was in? Uh, well, they, 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 went, they went what's called wildlife preserves, and this one was privately owned. Well, some were private, you know, like they're all like right around Kruger Park, connected to Kruger Park. Kruger Park itself is a national park, so you're limited what you can do there. The, the private game reserves, you, you have a lot more flexibility, uh, they're usually a little bit nicer and everything, uh, but part of the same general area. Yes? <laughs> you just did this? this we did this just, uh, let's see, this, we did it about a year ago actually, year to the day. About a year ago to the day. So, uh, somebody back there, I thought I had a question. I saw it before. Yes? I just wondered if when you were in South Africa, I'm very interested in history, if there were any museums about the apartheid system and Nelson Mandela's 27 years in prison. There is indeed. And we, we, we went and you can actually go to Robbers Island, which was the prison where Nelson Mandela was held. And we did go there. And they actually do have quite a bit of that, and they do talk about that quite a bit. What are they, what's their attitude toward the United States and, and um, the UK by now? Since uh, they seem to have, well, you know, it's hard because you don't really talk to the local people all that much. Um, they, they seem to be pretty good with that. I mean, most people, I think, are, you know, I, as we travel around, what I find is if you're friendly to people, they're not only friendly to you regardless of what they think is your government. So, mm -hmm. yes. Two things. What type of uh, cameras did you use? I saw you use sm smartphone, but how about your uh, other cameras? Well, you know what? My wife is a photographer, so I can't speak to what exactly she has. I will tell you that most of these are done on smartphones. We have Google Pixel phones, and 
they seem to work great for most of these. Have you thought about video? Uh, yeah, we, we did. We actually did take some video. I didn't bring it with me today, but then we did take some video as well too. Like we have video of the lion roaring, for example. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Did you plan this yourself or with the group? And no, we the usually approximate cost of like a we we, plan, we usually do them ourselves because we've done this so much. We have to be able to do our own thing. One thing I found is safaris are marked up incredibly in the U.S. to the tour companies. We book these through a South African tour. Company. And the price is about half of what you do it in a U.S. one. And you can go on the same trip, and you have the same guides, and it was just a wonderful experience. Now, when you go to a safari lodge in uh, any place, it's an all-inclusive. Let's say it's a thousand or two thousand a night, whatever it happens to be. That, I mean, everything is on board. It includes all your meals, it includes your game drives, everything. So basically, you know, the, the, like in this case, we just booked the safari lodge. And then they would arrange transportation from the airport. That's really, there's nothing more to do. Yes? Back in there. Yes? Did you have to be disinfected? No. Uh, no. No. There's no disinfectant. We had people from church, they had to they come up by boat. Yes. They had to be disinfected, then they had to put suits on. Then yeah. They couldn't no, be no. off the boat. No, we had that. We did not have okay. to do that. Yes? I know that this was a private game preserve, yes. so to speak. But, um, the rhinos had their their horns amputated, yes. and the elephants didn't. Uh, don't uh, poaching is quite prevalent. We hear about that quite a bit. Yes. Uh, why? I I don't know. I only I just surmised that obviously the rhinos are more in danger, and I think the rhino horns go for a lot more than what the elephant horns go for. So okay. I, 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 that would be my guess. There's a question back here. Somebody, yes. Did you have to have any medical tests? Shots before you no, know. we didn't. You know, they said the first time we went to Africa because we were going to a few different spots, they said you need to get yellow fever because we were going from one country to another one. So we went up to Dearborn, got the yellow fever. Nobody ever asked us for anything, no car or anything. So, but to go to Antarctica, we needed nothing. South Africa needs nothing. Kenya needs nothing. It's only if you go to certain regions and you're, you're traveling a lot throughout Africa. Yes. What part of Antarctica did your plane land in? Well, it, 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 it's, it's called Wolfstang One Way, and I, I don't know how to describe it, you know, I don't know, you know, other than that. But I would say, I think we were about, I'm going to say about 100 miles uh, inside, inside the coast. So because we, we, we flew over uh, Antarctica, the ice sheet, for what seemed like about 15, 20, you know, maybe 15 minutes, half hour, something like that. What country controls it? I have no country controls it. It's, it's, it's like a UN type thing where every, you know, certain countries have rights to, to go there and everything, but it's not controlled by any government. Russia's trying to. How thick is the ice sheet? Pardon me? How thick is the ice sheet? Uh, they told me, but I do not remember that. I know it's shrinking, but I can't say how much, so. About how many days were you there in just a ballpark? What does it cost to do something like this? Uh, I think this, uh, we, the, the, the Antarctica was an expensive portion of it, going back and forth. But just to do the Africa portion of it, uh, if you if you went coach, I mean, you could do it for, for I think the, the girls, the two girls who were with us did not do that. I think they spent 4000 4500 each for, with their fare. So all things considered, I thought it was pretty reasonable. Yeah. Considering the game reserve was at least, I want to say that was, the room it was 3000 a night or 2800 a night and split by two people. So. Yes. Um, for people who are interested in that Arlica, um, I have uh, friends in New Jersey who are in their late 70s and have difficulty walking. So they took an oceanic uh, true mm -hmm. that they went to Antarctica but didn't get off the ship. Yes. But on the ship were many people who had worked on Antarctica yes. and they gave lectures so they learned all about it and, and saw it in the distance. Yeah, we've been on our plane coming back. There's a lot of workers that came. Uh, you know, some of them have been in Antarctica for three months, six months, and needless to say, they were ready to, you know, they were ready to get back to civilization, I think. <laughs> that would be longer than I would want to be out of touch. <laughs> yes? The part where you walked up the, the mountain, or whatever that was, that was brown, Yes. Now, is that normally, would that be in their winter, would that be covered with snow? I would guess probably, yes. But you know that Antarctica is actually a desert. It doesn't get a lot of snow. It's okay. cold and it's icy, but it doesn't really get a lot of precipitation. And I never knew that until I went down there. But that's, it is a desert. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, guys, thank you.
you very much for having me.